Because Yeehaw Project Guy. I'm gonna challenge you and you guys walk. Pink boo. Oh hi, we're on a ship now. I don't know. <laughs> Today's video, my 1970 Dodge Challenger is gonna get a brand new painted grill and a little bit of dragster look. Hmm. Hey yo, hi compadre! In today's video, I'm fixing a problem that I think this challenge will definitely have. Maybe you think it too. This front end doesn't look mean enough. I'm gonna fix that in today's video, take the whole front end apart, paint it up, and give this car a facelift. So the first problem that I saw with this car when I bought it and already saw like the for sale ad on Facebook was that this thing doesn't look properly like a Challenger should. Now if you know what I mean, you know what I mean. If you don't know what I mean, this thing has an inline six front end, which is an arson silver or gray with like texture paint or whatever. And that makes it look like this with like a silver front end. Now if you know a proper 70 Challenger RT, it has a black front end. If you ask me, it looks way more mean and makes it look like way deeper inside the grill or whatever. And I'm gonna take the whole grill insert, headlight bezels and trim pieces out and we're gonna paint them black. Because yeehaw project car, you already know. I have never taken a 70 Challenger front end apart before, so I think we're gonna have to remove the bumper, maybe the lower valence panel. So I got the light bezels off and as you can see this grill is mounted in here with a bolt there, two bolts up here, then connected to the cowl panel or whatever radius support there on two spots, two bolts there and another bolt there. And then I think we have like a cross member down here and then it's also bolted in underneath in here. Now the thing is this whole grill piece goes out under the bumper here so we can't take the grill out over the bumper. So what I'm gonna try to do now is instead of removing like the whole lower valence panel and stuff like that, I think I'm just gonna try to loosen the bumper and see if we can like glide the bumper out because the bumper brackets in here are kind of slotted. So maybe just like move, move it out an inch or whatever uh, is maybe enough. <laughs> So that actually works uh, surprisingly well and it makes a lot of room. That space in between the grill and bumper all around. Also, what I'm gonna do when we're gonna put the bumper back on is loosen the brackets, of course, and then slide the bumper as far in as possible to make the bumper more tucked, if you will. So let's go around and loosen all the, the I think it's eight millimeter, eight millimeter bolts here on the, on the grill and uh, see if we can pop it out. I kind of feel like the front end looked like one of those AI art challenges right now. Maybe that's just me. Anyway, front end is loose and uh, hopefully I can just like pop it out. It's stuck on something over here. Watch me break a piece here for $1,000. Don't break. Oh, it's stuck right here. Oh, wait a minute. Now it looks like the off-road car from a roadkill garage. So we got the whole grill out here and of course with the, the bezels here as well. And uh, what I'm gonna do is just clean these really damn nice. Suddenly I'm standing in a place where it has 95 degrees. Isn't that nice? Welcome to the uh, old paint booth part of the uh, new shop. What I'm doing right now is going around and all like the, the bare spots or whatever, like chrome spots, uh, I'm grinding them down because this is like yellowish. This is some kind of corrosion or whatever on, on the chrome part. Um, so I'm taking care of that right now. Also, we got the, the charges parts in here, by the way. Uh, fenders, hood and stuff. So. If you're wondering, that build is hopefully gonna be a reality this next winter. There's just so much like finding old NASCAR parts to it and stuff that it just takes a damn long time to build that car. You can see the whole front end is taped off, prep, brake clean. Pretty much just need paint now. What I'm doing right now with these uh, headlight bezels, whatever, is uh, all the the nice and like smooth chrome or whatever. It doesn't 
adhere that well to paint. Or paint doesn't adhere that well to that. So what I'm doing is just going in here and lightly scratching it up with this like sandpaper roll right here. And I think what I'm gonna do, as you guys can see, it kind of has this like line right here, whatever. I think I'm gonna tape it off so the line comes in probably like a quarter inch further out with the black or whatever. So there we go, the vessels here are ready as well. So we're just gonna hang them up over here in this. There we go, we are ready to lay some paint. So that's the last coat right there and it looks real damn wet slash very glossy right now. But uh, when it dries up, it gets a real nice uh, satin look or whatever. The first coat looked real damn nice. It's gonna have a much more like mean black grill, like a deep grill or whatever, like a meaner look to it. A meaner face. Rawr! Okay, so we just got done unmasking the whole front end here. And uh, it looks freaking awesome with that little chrome accent to the black. Now the thing that I said about extending the black line outward, I kind of have a feeling that I maybe messed something up. Let's see when we install it. So I'm just gonna have to swap over to my uh, phone here real quick because uh, the old camera died. Oh hi, we are on a ship now. It looks like it anyhow. This seems like the perfect camera stand right here. So I'm gonna put you guys. Would you look at that? iPhone on a 283. Ta-da, how to be a YouTuber. So of course the challenge logo have to be installed as well, but uh, I'm gonna wait till the grill is in. So uh... pull the bumper out again, of course. But oh, man, just look at that already. Black out front end. You guys, okay, the lightning is a little, uh, there you go. Look at that. That looks sick. All blacked out grill. It looks way meaner now. But so next little thing I want to do real quick is actually remove the, the, fin the fender trims and stuff like that. And the reason why is I actually kind of like the look that it has these like small chrome strips or whatever and they are all like dented up and patined and stuff. But here's the thing. I use my car. Dirt road, gravel road, mud, etc. And uh, the thing is, when you got a chrome lip like this, stuff can get in behind it and then it's just gonna rot out your fender lip, which is no cool. But snow and water just get trapped behind it and then it's gonna rot out the fender lips. Ask me how I know, I had the same fender lips and stuff on my 75 bird and the first place that I got like small bubbly rust or whatever, well, fender lips, all around the fenders. So uh, I'm gonna remove them, plus I haven't had them off, so maybe there's already rot under them, I don't know. So right here, that's just bunch of dirt that uh, is kind of stuck down here but uh, no rust luckily so uh, we still got a clean fender by the way Mopar things uh, all the the chrome shirts or whatever are cut out like this to clear a stamping in the fender or whatever it just looks like somebody been in there with a I don't know angle grind or something yeah I don't know Mopar stuff right okay so we just got the rear one off and look at how much mud that's just like trapped in here between those are like big chunks Look at all that junk falling out. All just stuck in between this freaking chrome piece. And the crazy thing is, it's still damp. And it's been almost over a week since I last drove this car. And there you go, now without the fender chrome. Man, there was a lot of dirt and mud and stuff stuck there in the, behind the rear wheel. Wonder who, uh, whose fault that is. That's why I don't run them on any of my cars. I mean, even the truck I had, the Firebird, I removed that stuff because I just know it's gonna sit there, it's gonna be packed in there, it's gonna stay wet, it's gonna stay rusting, so get it out of there. If it's a car you actually use, sure, if it's a restored car going to Barrett Jackson or whatever, sure, slap those things on, you know, doesn't matter, but uh, this thing, uh, 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 ain't no good. So here's a little surprise for the end of the video. We're gonna try to mount these uh, wheels up on the Challenger. You guys probably already seen on Instagram the ones with the gold. This is actually the same wheels, and I just shot these wheels with some black paint real quick, and without it, even masking me off with doing anything. Apparently the way like the air did like a turbulence or whatever, it made a perfect like gold line around the outside perimeter of the wheel, which looks, if you ask me, 
pretty damn sick. It gives like a little bit of accent color just around there. I even got oil spray in the tire and stuff like that, but for some reason, it didn't stick to this edge just here. Uh, don't ask me how that works, but it uh, looks sick. Um, we're gonna try to slap these on and challenge it real quick because I think they're gonna look sick in black. Uh, the gold was not really my thing to the green. Uh, it should have been a darker gold if you ask me, but this should look awesome. Well guys, here's the new look. Some uh, wannabe image race master <laughs> tires, if you will. Blacked out, 15 by 8 with very wide backspacing steelies. And then we got the 14 by 6 up front on the 205 tires versus the 305 16 in the back. I mean, this is a look, right? That's pretty damn cool. And then imagine like a 426 Hemi with a dual quartz underneath the hood, complete sleeve. So if you guys wonder how I got the stance right now, the cool thing about these old school one cylinder lifts, right, is you can't see the arms on the lift. But the thing is, I actually have the car probably lifted up like this much right now on the lift. So in the front, the suspension is like fully drooped or whatever. And in the back, the slick is just like touching the ground. So it looks like it's all jacked up in the rear and almost like it's just launched off the, the drag step all tall in the front like. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty sick. It's definitely a look and I will definitely rock this even though I have a freaking hundred horsepower inline six. The green against the black wheel and then the slick with the little uh, white wrinkle uh, paint. Which by the way was just two pieces of tape and a cardboard and then I had some old uh, white header paint. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Uh, don't forget to leave a like if you guys want to help my videos out. It helps very much if you guys hit the like button. The last two videos has done absolutely amazing. Which is the only two videos in pro that I have been telling my viewers to actually hit the like button. I appreciate a lot if you guys hit the like button. And of course if you want to see more videos then also hit the red subscribe button down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys uh, very soon when we work uh, on this thing. And uh, as you may notice in this video, we got the engine working on right here. Honing, new rings, new... That's a lot of things going on. Also a lot of bad things we found about it. Stay tuned.